Hello, welcome back to the shop. You'll have to bear with me today. Uh, my asthma's been acting up and I'm having a little trouble speaking, but I still wanted to do a video. What I decided to do today, I've got a couple of small projects going around the shop and I needed some way to mark lines on my wood to be able to make accurate cuts. Using a lead pen, I found I was constantly breaking the lead. Using a pencil, as the pencil dulled, the lead got fatter and my lines were not as accurate. So I decided to make myself a, a marking knife or a scribe. Now, I didn't want to make a marking knife with an open end because I knew I wanted to be able to carry it with me because I'm forever laying things down in the shop and then I'm searching for them. So I decided to make something in the form of an ink pen. And this is what I came up with. It is a walnut pen, but if you look at the end, I have a tungsten welding rod in there and I sharpened it to a point. That is a very hard steel. It will not dull easily. I've tested it and it makes amazing marks on wood. This was a blank that I had for a while and you can see I've actually got my name engraved in it. So I lucked out there when I put it together, but this made a great little tool that I can stick in a pocket, my sleeve pocket on my smock and it's always with me and it's always ready to mark straight lines. So let me show you how I made it. This metal rod is called a tungsten tip. Uh, it's used by welders and can be purchased at any welding supply shop. The diameter of the rod is almost exactly the same as the diameter of the tip of a cross refill. The reason why I chose that diameter is because it needs to be able to fit through the tip of a slimline pin nib. I want to start out by sharpening the tip of this rod to the finest point that I can get. Now that I've got a good point on the tip of my tungsten rod, the next step is to cut it to the proper length. We're going to start by removing the threaded attachment from the back of the cross refill. And we'll just line that refill up with the tungsten rod and mark it. I'm just going to use my Dremel tool with a reinforced fiber wheel and cut the excess off the rod. and the two should now be roughly the same length. The next thing I need to do is obviously this rod is not the same diameter as the back of the cross refill, so it won't fit into the threaded insert. I'm gonna use a little bit of electrical tape and I'm just gonna put it on the end of the rod, the end that I did not put the point on. and we're just going to roll it on to beef up the thickness of the rod. May have gone a little too far there. I'm going to back off a little bit and I'm going to trim this off. Let's see how this fits. I'm still a little tight, so I'm going to go ahead and unroll a tiny bit of the tape and just trim it down. Okay, now I've got a pretty decent friction fit there, so I'm going to force it back into the fitting as far as I can. I wanted to test and make sure that I was able to get this refill far enough back into the threaded fitting. So I grabbed a refill from another slimline kit to compare. And what I found is I actually pushed it farther back into the threaded insert than the standard refill fits. Now I'm not gonna worry a great deal about this and I'll tell you why. With a slimline pin, 
I can push the transmission farther into the front half of the pin and I can take up any of this distance uh, that I need. I do know this and for future reference I will make my tungsten rods about a quarter of an inch longer. I made a walnut pin a while back and I never assembled it but the main reason I made it was my brother-in-law got a new laser engraver and I was testing it and it just so happens that this particular pin kit has my name engraved in it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to make my shop scribe. We'll go ahead and get the nib assembled in the front half of the pin. Now we'll adjust our press and install the transmission. I'm going to start by installing it all the way up to the end of the brass. I know it's going to be uh, not far enough into the pin kit, but we can adjust that out once we get started. Let's take our refill, pop it in, thread it, and we're nowhere near the end of the pin. So I'm going to go in about a quarter of an inch. I'm getting closer. And you can see that the tip of the tungsten rod is right at the tip of the nib. So we're close. I want to continue to adjust this to where the rod, the tungsten rod extends as far as it can, but when retracted is just below the surface. I don't want to be able to feel it. So as I look inside of my pin, I can see that I have about a sixteenth of an inch to go. Looking much better. I've still got a tiny bit of play. I'm going to give it one more bump. And that's perfect. I don't know how well you can see that in the video, but the rod is just below the surface. Let's go ahead and get our trim ring installed. And let's put the clip on. Let's barely put that on. I want to adjust it. I think I want the clip to lay right. Whoops, sorry, took you out of frame. I think I want the clip to lay right there where you can see my name. <clears throat> and that's perfect. You can see that pushing the transmission down inside of the pin did not affect the functionality of the transmission whatsoever. Let's test it. I've got a nice piece of maple here, and let's scribe a few lines. I'm not sure how well you can see those, but it's really doing a nice job. Tungsten is extremely hard. It's going to take a long time to wear the point down off the tip of this. So I've got a great new tool for my shop. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll be glad to answer them for you. If you're not a subscriber, I'm inviting you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. That way all of my future videos will be delivered directly to your YouTube feed. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today, and I'd like to let you know that you are always welcome in my shop.